Amen. Amen. First, let's give a praise clap to God. I have certainly been blessed by these young people. And I give thanks to God for their growth. I give thanks to God. And even for the coordinator. I truly, truly give thanks to God. I've truly been blessed. I might say I'm in somewhat of a handicap. I rushed off from my house and forgot my glasses. So I may have to call on Omar <laughs> to do the preaching today. Now just for a few moments, I have here Luke, the 15th chapter, and I'm going to ask you to stand, and if you would read for me Luke 15, because I have a different, I don't have the King James Version in use of Bethany in English, so I'm going to ask you to read Luke, the 15th chapter, and if you could start in verse 11, Luke 15, and I want you to start at verse 11. If you will just read me all, let's say, three verses, Luke 15, and beginning at verse 11. Do you have it? Amen. Okay, let's start. And he said Now, there are many verses to this story that Jesus is telling here, but I'm going to comment maybe, maybe 15 minutes. And I want to use the subject of far country. A far country. Because he says here in verse 13, and he took, that is the boy that left home. And he took his journey into a far country. Amen. He wanted to get away from home. So he went into a far country. Amen. So Jesus tells the story here of a boy by the providence of God that had been placed in a good home. From the text, the boy had a good daddy and a good mom. And they were people of means. But if you meditate on these verses you'll find there was a restlessness inside of that boy. He was in a good home. But there was a restlessness in the heart of that boy. And the heart of every problem is a problem of the heart. And because there was a restlessness inside of that boy, one day he went to his father and said, Father, give me the portion of the estate that falls to me. 
I want my share. So you can see there was a selfishness inside also in that voice. He just did not want to wait for daddy to die. So the father gave him his portion. We could give the boy an A if the boy had went out and made a wise investment. But that's not what happened. So what happened, boy, after a few days? One translation says a short time later. And that's important. A short time later, the boy did not want to procrastinate. He just wanted to get out of that house. That good one. So Jesus is teaching here. The boy hated restraints. His strengths are needed. I give thanks to God that my father and my mother imposed restraints. I would have destroyed myself. But they imposed restraints. To keep me from destroying myself. My father also had a belt. <laughs> he could have named it, I need thee every hour. <laughs> I must confess, even if the people of died for say here, he used it on me. Amen. Amen. But it seemed to me that the boy did not like restraints. So Jesus says here, he did not delay. After many days, he just took off. And the Bible tells us he journeyed, he journeyed, say journey. journey. He journeyed into a far country. He did not reach the far country seemingly in a few days. It took him some time to get there. But finally, the boy made it to the far country. He just wanted to get out of that house. Amen? Amen. What does a far country mean? It's a story. He was trying to escape the authority of God over his life. He did not want God to sit up on the throne of his life and call the shots. He wanted to call the shots. So Jesus tells us this good boy, he was a good boy, from a good home, ended up in a far country. And the worst thing that can happen to us to ask my brothers and sisters is whenever we're able to do as we please, we will always end up in a far country. Amen. Can I get amen? amen? I must confess something to you, but don't you tell nobody. I've been in a far country. I cannot go. But thanks be to God. I have a praying mother. And I have a praying father. And thanks be to God, I came back home. 
Now for a few moments, I want you to watch what happened. The boy did not want the authority of God over his life. So the very first thing Jesus said happened to him, he became a prodigal son. Prodigal means waste. He wasted his substance, that inheritance. The Bible says, with riotous living, loose living, and this riotous living in verse 30 included, can I say it? Can I say it? Amen. Sleeping with prostitutes. Amen. It's right there in verse 30. I'm saying it because it's in verse 30. That good boy, he was a good boy, had a lot of money in his pocket. And the prostitutes were waiting for him. There are two things I wish the young people would, would register these two things in their archive. There are two things in the scripture that God tells us to flee from. Immorality and idolatry. Two, he didn't say walk away from them. God's word tells us, run! Yeah. Flee! Immorality and adultery. There's a young man in the Bible by the name of Joseph. Boy, I love that guy. Maybe around 17 years old, tall, dark, and handsome. There was a woman down there by the name of, I don't know, Potiphar's wife, married woman. And she made her best moves towards him. But that guy left his coat in her hand. Amen. He fled. Two things God tells us to flee from. Sexual immorality and adultery. But this boy did not run. The Bible said he wasted. He became a prodigal. Prodigal means waste. He wasted his substance. And his substance included more than the money in his pocket. It included his character. His character. And by the way, the character that God builds in us is the only thing we're going to carry over there with us. Amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? The character, the Holy Ghost, builds in us. We're going to carry it over with us to the other side. And our assignment on the other side is predicated on the kind of character we brought over God. Amen. Amen. I've been telling some people this week on the phone that when some of us get over there, they're going to give us a broom. <laughs> and we're going to sweep the streets. We're going to be singing. But some of us are not going to take a good character over there. The boy wasted, Jesus said. Wasted his substance in riotous, loose living. Loose living. Let me see what else he waited to happen to the boy. We see also in verse 14. Young people, do you have the Bible? I'm going to get you involved. I want you to read verse 14 for me. Then I know I got you. Who will read verse 14? 
good. He, 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 good. Mr. Presiding Office. <laughs> Read verse 14 for me. After he spent everything there, he was served man with his own country, and he began to be a king. Yes. After he had quite spent everything, sinful pleasures never satisfy. That's what he's teaching. That's the spiritual lesson there. Sinful, he spent everything, and he was in one. God is teaching that sinful pleasures, they don't satisfy. That's what the story is teaching. Now he spent all that money and now he's in war. That's the lesson is sinful pleasure never satisfies. I'm going to ask somebody else then to read the next verse. Who will read the next verse? In my young boy. Good. Very good. Now what God is teaching, he went and joined himself. Now that citizen that's out yonder in a far country is the devil. That citizen out yonder in a far country, and he's got a whole lot of folks under his control. The Bible teaches in John the 8th chapter and verse 34 that when we commit or practice sin, we're brought into bondage. And whenever we're brought into the bondage, the devil is able to rule us. Amen. See, he's ruling America today. Amen. America is out there in the far country. Amen. And the devil is controlling them. Did you notice what the devil told him, that citizen said to that boy when he was in bondage? Feast wine. Feast wine. Now that, that's the lowest that a Jewish boy could fall. A Jewish boy is the lowest form of degradation for a Jewish boy to have to feed swine. The devil's goal when you get out there in that far country is to destroy us. He wants us to do things that will bring him glory and not God glory. We're put on this earth to bring glory to our God. Amen. That's what we're here for. For nothing else, we're down here to bring glory to God. Amen. But because he was in bondage to the devil, the devil said, boy, peace mine. Bring me glory. Can I get an amen? Amen. Young folk, who's going to read the next verse? I'm getting participation here from the people. Amen. Who's going to read me the next verse? Good. Beautiful saying. Beautiful saying, have children done to us that the swine did not eat. And no man gave us it. Mm hmm. Who will read you the next verse? Verse 17. Now what that verse is teaching is that sin has a way of paralyzing the image of God inside of us. 
and the old evil animal nature is liberated. Sin. While that boy was out there doing all those crazy things, Jesus is teaching he was half insane. Sin makes us crazy. Amen. Sinful folks do all kinds of crazy things that sometimes we don't understand. Say, he's crazy. Well, he's telling the truth. I don't care how much you beg a person that's sinning, it ain't going to get them out. Amen. You got to pray them out. Amen. You got to pray them out. The image of God inside of me, because sin has paralyzed. Now, I'm not going to stay up much longer, but sin has paralyzed. You know what paralyzed is? I don't want participation. What does paralyzed mean? The good. That, that's exactly what sin does. But thanks be to God, Jesus said the boy came to himself. He came to his senses. Did you know what brought him to his senses? It was the goodness of God. He, when he came to his senses, he began to think about his father's house. Amen. The home that he wanted to get away from. It wasn't so bad after all. So he came to himself. I love that. And when he came to himself, what happened to him in verse 18? Let's read it, because I'm not going to stay up much longer. What happened to him in verse 18? Read it. Yes. Now here's repentance. Here's repentance. If you go home, and act the same way that you're acting if you're a bad person, then you ain't repentant. Repentance is pictured as a journey. He got up out of the pig pen and he never stopped walking until he was back at his father's house. That is a picture of true repentance. Repentance is more than an emotion. It's an action. Did you get it? He got up out of that pig pen and he started walking. And the boy never stopped walking until he had left the far country and was back in fellowship with his father. Because when he got back home, he and his father embraced. Amen. That fellowship. He left that far country. He left the far country. If you know of someone down at the school, and they say they went to church on Sunday, and that they repented and they still give the teachers a hard time, they repented. Amen. They just felt good on Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When my mother was used to get ready to whip me, I said, I'm oh, sorry, she's out of here. Yeah, that, <laughs> that ain't repentance. Repentance means change of direction. It's a change. You know, school teachers are educators of God. They're ministers or the scripture. Hebrews 13, we obey those in authority. Education is a tool that equips us to use the gift that God has given to us. You need a tool. There are around 42 people wrote this book, but all of them had a tool. So we ought to respect even the teacher. Amen. 
No Christian should give a teacher a hard time. Amen. No Christian, no true Christian, should give a teacher a hard time. Because if you repent, there's a change. There's a change. There's another verse here mentioned, and I won't even ask you to read it because I'm stopping now. And music and dancing is mentioned. I believe it's verse 25. Music and dancing is mentioned. They were partying. It was a party. When the boy came back home from the far country, the father was so happy that they got a party going. There was dancing. I wish I could dance. I show you how. <laughs> what is the meaning of that? Is when you leave the far country and you come back and you get into fellowship and relationship with God through Jesus Christ, there's joy in your salvation. Amen. Amen. If the people here don't have no joy in their salvation, they're not in an intimate relationship with God. Amen. Intimacy. Intimacy is what brings the joy. Are you listening? Amen. There was dancing. There was music. Because there's joy when you leave the far country and you come back home to your father. Now, do you know anybody in your school that said father? Do you know anybody? You know all the saints down there. <laughs> <laughs> My God, I don't go to that school. <laughs> That's the school I want to go to. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. That's enough. Let's stand. Anybody that's...